Hey everyone, in this episode of the Motorcycle Adjacent Podcast, we're going to talk about wind therapy and motorcycle education by way of books. Hey everyone, welcome to the Motorcycle Adjacent Podcast. This is episode 5, and I am your host, Walt, from Walt in PA. And as I said at the start of the show, we're going to talk a little bit about wind therapy and motorcycle books in general. Uh, and what I've been reading, what I'm recommending to you, as well as some other stuff. So, let's get to it. So, to kick off this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about wind therapy. Now, as with any hobby, you know, people say all you have to do is X and your stresses just melt away. And when it comes to motorcycles, for a very long time, I felt that that was actually accurate. I could get on my bike after a stressful day at work or a stressful day at home or a stressful day of errands, running with the kids, doing this and doing that. And getting on the bike would just melt away all of that stress and make me feel wonderful when I got back home. I would feel relieved and energized and just ready to go again. But in the back of my mind, you know, there's always that standardized piece of advice that kept, keeps ringing. And that is only ever get on your motorcycle when you're in the right headspace. So in other words, if you have a fight with your wife or you have a fight with a coworker, you know, don't get on your motorcycle angry because there's a, there's a good chance that you'll wind up speeding and yeeting yourself into a tree. Or, you know, if you're depressed, you don't want to ride because there are things that that are going to play in the back of your mind and potentially take your mind off of the road and increase your risk or increase the risk of getting injured or making a poor decision. And I've never felt like I've been in that situation. Um, all of the stressors that I've had to deal with, the motorcycle has be- become the the magic pill, so to speak, where no matter what was going on in life, all it would take is an hour or two hours or six hours on the bike and all the stresses would just kind of fall by the wayside and when I got back home again, everything would be all right in the world. Now that all kind of changed over this past week. Things at work haven't been going great um, and this past week especially has been remarkably stressful. Uh, Decisions were made well above my pay grade to make some changes in the company that directly affect how I perform my job and basically how I my ability to perform my job. And it's been weighing on my mind a lot. So on Friday evening, I decided I'm going to get on the bike, I'm going to go for a ride, and I'm just going to forget about all this stuff that has been driving me nuts throughout the week from work. So I get on my bike and I head on out. And I'm riding on down the road, and I just can't shake it. I just can't shake the thoughts of work, the things that I'm dealing with. And to my amazement, I I found myself talking to myself. My cameras weren't running, but I was literally talking in my helmet as if I was recording a motovlog. And I was going through the list of things that were annoying me at work and how they could possibly be changed and you know just my outlook on things and i found myself getting more and more frustrated and of course because i'm i'm working myself up i'm dwelling on all of these issues that were bugging me before i got on the bike and now they're bugging me while i'm on the bike and at that point i'm actually getting angry because i feel like the stresses at work have actually stolen the joy out of riding my motorcycle <laughs> it's 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 kind it's It makes me laugh to think about it that way, but that's really how I felt in the moment. I went up riding for about an hour, doing nothing but dwelling on this circumstance or this situation. And ultimately, when I got back home and I parked the bike, I was every bit as stressed out as I was before I started it and set off on that ride. So this situation made me realize that there are things that can weigh on your mind that will take away from your bike. You know, perhaps I was dwelling on something and I wasn't paying as close attention to the road as I should have. Um, it, it just made me realize that while motorcycles are amazing things and I truly and genuinely enjoy my time riding, 
there are certain things that can can take that joy away if you allow them to. And there were numerous times throughout the ride where I realized what I was doing, but I just couldn't shake it. It's in, my mind just kept going back to these things that were bothering me. So I think it's important to emphasize that while motorcycles are extremely therapeutic, they're not a magic pill. They don't fix everything. So the next time you're stressed or annoyed, think about it before you hop on the bike. Maybe it'll help, maybe it won't help. Just something to think about. All right, next up in the podcast is motorcycle education in the way of books. So I've always been a fan of reading. Uh, It was something I did a lot when I was a kid. Just getting lost in books was something that I, I, I enjoyed. And, you know, back in grade school and junior high and high school, I think we can all remember a time when we're sitting in our English class and we were assigned a book to read. And, you know, you'd have to read a chapter or two chapters and then you would sit there in class and then discuss what you read or there would be a little quiz on it and whatnot. Well, most of the students would read the bare minimum and barely be prepared for that discussion. I, on the other hand, would usually read the entire book in, in, uh, in very few sittings and then just kind of be sitting there twiddling my thumbs while everyone else was reading additional chapters or I would just move on to something else entirely. Uh, reading was just a way to get lost and it was fun for me. As I got older, you know, I got a job, I started having an adult life. And my priorities shifted in life. I wasn't able to read nearly as often as I was I was when I was younger. Um, it just kind of fell by the wayside until, I guess it was around 2008 when the economy was uh, rough. <laughs> a lot of uh, jobs were laying people off. I think that was right around the time the housing market crashed. Just uh, the economy wasn't in great shape. And I wound up being laid off from work. And I was laid off for about a month. And during that time, I was bored out of my mind. I was sitting at home, you know, working on little projects here and there. And I needed something to do while my wife was at work all day. And I decided one day to just pick up a book. And I started reading. And next thing you know, um, I started reading the first book in a 12-book series. And before I went back to work, I had finished the 12th book. And that just kind of spiraled and I started reading other books and more books and it just I was constantly ordering new new paperback series from Amazon because they were dirt cheap and it was just something that uh, reignited in me it was I really enjoyed reading but as everything goes in life you know there's ebbs and flows so when I got busy again and you know started having children and I just didn't have the free time that I had when I was younger books kind of got pushed by the wayside again. And that's where podcasts really started playing a major role in my life because I found myself sitting in a cubicle for eight to 10 hours a day and listening to music just started becoming monotonous where you're hearing the same song over and over and over again, especially in services like uh, Pandora. Um, And I needed something else. So that's when I turned to podcasts and I was listening to the Joe Rogan Experience, um, The Church of What's Happening Now by Joey Diaz, the Bigger Pockets Business Podcast, the Bigger Pockets Money Podcast. uh, Just the the list goes on and on. There is just a variety of them. And I could probably pull up my phone and, and look at a couple of dozen that are still in my podcast feed. But I just would engross myself in different podcasts and try to educate myself and entertain myself throughout the course of a day. Then, of course, the pandemic hit and I found myself sitting at home with my children because they were doing this virtual learning thing through school and I couldn't sit at my desk all day with my AirPods in and listen to podcasts. So instead, I decided to opt out of the podcast or or pay much less attention to podcasts and instead I started focusing a lot of my free time on YouTube because it was really easy for me to pull up a motovlog, hit play, and then passively watch it while I was working for 10 minutes or so and then if one of the kids needed something I could just hit pause or if I got a phone call I'd just hit pause and if I came back to it to 20-30 minutes later it was no big deal. You just hit play again and you know finish up the video. So, Motovlogs eventually 
took priority over podcasts for me. And that's when I got really involved in the motovlogging community. It's, I was watching dozens upon dozens of channels, commenting as frequently as I possibly could, trying to become just heavily involved in the motovlogging community. It was something that I was getting involved in myself. I was trying to branch out and socialize with as many channels as I could. And it was, it was something I really enjoyed. But, you know, again, things kind of evolve. I, I watch a lot less YouTube than I used to. There's still a handful of key channels that I try to keep up with, but it's, it's become harder and harder. Now, in that time between when I started re heavily responding and commenting to YouTube channels and when it started petering off, I realized that I wasn't doing any I wasn't doing much to educate myself. I wasn't really listening to podcasts much anymore. I was still having trouble focusing on a podcast at home with the kids around like I used to while I was stuck in a cubicle because you you would just kind of isolate yourself by popping in the ear the you know the AirPods or the earbuds. And you know while I was at home I just couldn't really do that. I couldn't 100% focus on a podcast because you know the kids would always need something. So, uh, I decided to pick up an Audible subscription, and I've been listening to audiobooks off and on now for the past several months, and that's kind of where motorcycle education has come into this whole thing, and I realize it's just a really long way of, of laying out the story of how I eventually wound up purchasing an Audible subscription, but... Uh, I wanted to kind of educate myself more on on a variety of things, most primarily business because I've got you know a business on the side, and after a while, business books started getting a little tedious. <laughs> so, to break things up, I, I started downloading uh, motorcycle audiobooks, and it's kind of opened my eyes to what's all out there. And I want to run through a list of the books that I've consumed over the past, let's say, year and a half, and it's not a huge list, and kind of give you a general idea of what you should maybe read, maybe what you might want to avoid, and, uh, and just kind of talk about it. So for this, let's start at the very beginning. Before I, I purchased an Audible subscription, I did download a couple of eBooks from the Kindle store, the first of which was The Road to Mastery by Greg Winmar. Now, Greg Winmar is Moto Jitsu, and I purchased this book while I was shopping for my Honda CB650F when I was in that transitional phase where I decided I wanted to get back into motorcycles, but I hadn't really got there yet because it's it was during the pandemic and dealerships were actually closed and not doing business. So I started uh, picking up a couple of books to try to get myself back into the groove. And The Road to Mastery was the, the very first book that I picked up. Now, uh, Road to Mastery is a very good surface level book. It covers kind of the mindset of getting into motorcycles, uh, some of the things that you're, you're going to have to do, like getting licensed, uh, getting your your motorcycle endorsement, some safety features that you should be looking for in gear, why you should be looking at gear versus riding without, and just some general mindset things when you're actually out on the road. And most importantly, the importance of practice. That, that book kind of really it puts an exclamation point on the end of that. Practice is key. So I read that book. I really enjoyed it. It was short, inexpensive, and as a broad overview, you know, surface level stuff, I thought it was a really good book. And if you if you are on the fence about getting into motorcycles or you know someone that is looking at riding for the first time, Road to Mastery is a great way to kind of allow them to dip their toe into the entire process and, and get a very wide view of, you know, some of the things that they'll need to consider. The next book I also purchased as a Kindle book, and that is Motorcycle Information Safety Systems by Michael Wesley. And I think that I bought this book because at the time I was writing uh, blog posts on waltnpa.com about my whole process of getting uh, a motorcycle in Pennsylvania or getting reacquainted with motorcycles in Pennsylvania. At the time I was struggling with finding a... a um, 
a basic rider course because I wanted to start as if I was starting from scratch. So I wanted to take the, the free state course. I was struggling to do that and I had made a blog post about it and the author, Michael Wesley, had come across this blog post and reached out to me. We got to talking a little bit. I found out that he wrote a book. So I purchased the book, I read the book, and I enjoyed it. Much like Road to Mastery, it is very surface level, but instead of focusing on Instead of having a really broad focus on a variety of things, I think Motorcycle Information Safety Systems focuses more on mindset and some of the things that you should pay attention to to keep you safe on the road. You know, for instance, if you're if you're going down a road and you see a car come across at an intersection, you know, what do you want to look for to keep risk at a minimal? You know, do you want to to try to look the driver in the eye do you want to look at the the wheel to see if it starts moving you know just where should you position yourself in the road just uh key things like that it's more about riding safely than it is about choosing gear or taking classes it's uh again surface level stuff but it's more of an em- there's more of an emphasis on mindset than anything else and for that i think it's a it's a great book not only for people that are interested in getting into motorcycles but also someone that's been riding a little while can can pull some valuable information out of this book and learn from it the next book on my list is another ebook that i downloaded and that was total control by lee parks it is pretty much the you know the quintessential motorcycle book for most people. Uh, Total Control is, I believe they're based out of Florida, or not Florida, California, and they have their own way of doing things. They're, they, they, they teach people to ride of all skill sets, and there's just an abundance of information in this book. Now, I wasn't able to finish this book, and not really proud of it. I definitely want to go back and start it over again. But I, as I said earlier, I was in a weird transitional phase. I was trying to read books to get me set up for riding when I could finally purchase that bike. And Total Control was in that that time frame where I didn't have a bike yet. So I, I found it a real struggle to read about these different techniques and things that would happen while you were performing certain tasks on the bike without physically being able to go out on a motorcycle and do those things so that I could see and feel how the bike would react to these different techniques that were being discussed in the book. So because I had such a difficult time with this disconnect, I wound up putting the book aside and I never got back to it. And now that I'm riding on a regular basis, I've been meaning to get back to that book and reading it from start to finish, but I just haven't found the time. And unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be available on Audible. The next book on my list is actually the first audiobook that I purchased in Audible. Not, not, it wasn't actually the first audiobook that I purchased from Audible, but it was the first motorcycle-based book that I purchased on Audible. And it is Let's Ride by Sonny Barger. Sonny is, well, he recently passed away, but he's known for being, I believe, the president of the Hells Angels for a very long time. And he's got kind of a, a rough and gruff persona or personality just a scope around him so i wasn't really sure whether or not i wanted to buy this book just because i thought maybe it would be biased but i went ahead and i bought it anyway and i'm really glad i did it was by far the longest motorcycle audiobook that i purchased i want to say that it was about eight hours long it's a lot of surface level stuff but it's really, really broad spectrum. It covers everything uh, from start to finish. So it covers mindset. It covers the type of gear that you want to purchase. It covers the process that you're going to go through for licensing. It covers uh, shopping for a motorcycle at a dealership. It covers shopping for a motorcycle from a private seller. It covers the the potential issues that you may f- that you're going to want to look for when purchasing a motorcycle from a private seller. It talks about basic maintenance tasks. It talks about the mindset of riding. It talks about selecting a bike. It talks about um, 
you selecting a bike based on the type of riding that you want to do and it the list goes on and on it just it covers such a broad spectrum of things that i think it is a fantastic broad overview of motorcycles in general so again if you're someone that's looking at getting into riding for the first time this is a great covers everything book uh, if you have been riding for a while a lot of the stuff is going to be kind of common knowledge if, if you've been immersed in motorcycles so there are definitely th interesting things and important things that you can learn from this book but again very very broad spectrum very surface level stuff there are some things in there where you can see the bias um, based on his preferred riding style you know th th again there's there's just some areas where you can you can see the bias but I don't think that takes away from the book I think it's a very good book in general and uh, well worth the couple of dollars that I paid for it. So the next motorcycle book in my list, and I promise we're getting toward the end of the list, it's not a motorcycle book in the sense that it teaches you anything about motorcycles. So if you're a fan of The Walking Dead, you are familiar with Norman Reedus and his character. Well, uh, Norman Reedus did a TV show a couple of years ago, and I'm not sure whether it's still on or not, called Let's Ride with Norman Reedus. And basically he would take a celebrity or a guest and they would go out for a ride. And it would usually take a day or two and they would see certain sites and they would you know, talk about riding and what it meant to them. It was a pretty good show. I did see the first and part of the second season. Well, anyway... While I was browsing Audible one day, I saw that Norman Reedus was popping up in the list of books when you search for the term motorcycle. And it was for an upcoming novel called The Ravaged. So I wound up pre-ordering the book, and I didn't read it until a couple weeks after it was actually available because I was taking in other books. But... It's, it's kind of a motorcycle book because one of the characters in the book rides a motorcycle and is doing a cross-country trip. But it is, it's a work of fiction. It's, it's an interesting book. I enjoyed it. Um, but if, you know, if you're looking for motorcycle education, The Ravage by Norman Reedus isn't it. Uh, if you're looking for fictional stories and just wanting to hear something that either want to hear it on audible or want to read it as a book that involves motorcycles then it's a it's a cool book and it's a fun book and you should definitely pick it up um they're they're not you know i don't want to get into like this big review of this book and 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 things like that but i don't i can't think of the name of the movie but the in i want to say it was in maybe the early 80s mid 80s there was a there was a movie that came out and I think it was a Stephen. It was based on Stephen King, and for whatever reason, I I think it had something to do with Cat's Eye. Basically, the movie was one one part of the movie. There's like a guy on a ledge, and a cat comes out and sees him, and then another part of the movie, there's this little girl who may or may not be Drew Barrymore. My memory's not great. Um, where there's like this little troll thing that cuts a hole in her baseboard and comes out and terrorizes terrorizes her at night. It's like that in the sense that it's a collection of short stories that are all going off at the same time, but they don't interact with one another. And even at the end of the book, they don't converge. And all of a sudden, like, everything gets wrapped up nice and tidy. It's, it's just kind of a... I enjoyed the book, but it was a little strange. Uh, if he came out with a second book, I would most likely pick it up. I did enjoy it, but as a, I guess I guess you call it a freshman novel, you know there were some some things that will definitely smooth out with his writing in time as he writes more and more books or produces more and more novels. Um, but anyway, that was *The Ravaged* by Norman Reedus. All right, <laughs> next book on my list, and I promise we're getting toward the end, is Motorcycle Smart Smarts by David Mixon. And uh, Motorcycle Smarts is a series. There's uh, a couple of different books, and this is the first book in the series. And it focuses, much like Motorcycle Information Safety Systems, 
it focuses on being smart, writing smart, uh, mindset techniques, um, decisions that you're making while writing. It's surface level stuff, but it's um, there's a little bit more depth than the other two books. I, I thought it was pretty good. There was a lot of common sense sort of stuff in there. But again, you know, when you when you kind of immerse yourselves in motorcycles for a while, a lot of this surface level stuff just seems very surface level. Or, or maybe it's not really surface level stuff, but it comes across that way because you've heard it so many times from so many sources. Uh, but again, it was a good book. The second, the, the very last book in my list, I promise, is Motorcycle Dream Ride by David Mixon. And it's actually the second book in the Motorcycle, Motorcycle Smarts series. And this is actually an account of him riding from Alabama to Alaska. And him and a buddy go on this, this very long trip. And they have a, a, a very short time frame to do it. I want to say it's 28 days. They both rode uh, BMW GS bikes, and basically it's a day-by-day, almost like a diary entry sort of thing as they progress from Alabama to Alaska and all of the struggles they had in between, and, you know, all highs and lows. It's, it's, it's an interesting story. As someone that would love to do some motorcycle travel one day, I, I found it really fascinating to... to to take in some of the challenges that they faced. It was it was a good book. It was enjoyable. You should definitely check it out if you're into long distance touring or if you're planning on doing a long trip, multiple days. This is uh, something that you may want to look into. Motorcycle Dream Ride by David Mixon. All right, so the last part of the Motorcycle Adjacent Podcast Episode 5 is uh, we're going to keep with tradition. It seems like every episode I give you a behind-the-scenes look at the progress of the podcast or the, pro- the, the progress of either the YouTube channel or just Walt NPA in general, things that I'm doing behind the scenes. I think that it would be kind of interesting to, to keep on going since I made some additional changes in the past two weeks, and there's going to be even more going forward. So... If you are a fellow motovlogger and you are watching this, and chances are you've got just as many subscribers as I do, or in that that less than a thousand range, you're going to think that this is extreme overkill, but I did it anyway. I actually established, or I submitted the paperwork to establish myself as a business, and I submitted for an EIN number, and... Uh, yeah, it's probably overkill. However, I'm trying to see this from a long-term perspective. So I had mentioned uh, earlier on that I had just a really rough week at work. Well, a little backstory there is I actually had a lot of rough weeks in a row, and I put in my notice. I had a meeting with the president of the company. Assurances were made that things would be better. I decided to stay. And things got better for a couple of months, but we seem to be backsliding. And then with this most recent problem, I I don't foresee myself being with the company for a long time. You know, I, I, I see kind of light at the end of the tunnel where, or I shouldn't say light at the end of the tunnel, but I see... I see a change happening, whether it's going to be in a couple months or a couple of years. There is, there is a jumping off point there. I'm a big fan of Gary Vaynerchuk, and if you watch his stuff, uh, there, there's a piece of advice that he, he likes to give where he says that you should find something that you're passionate about and grind it out. And in, in the process of grinding it out, you will eventually find a way to make money doing it. And I really enjoy motorcycles, and because I see, I see an end at some point to my day job, I realized that I don't want to continue working for other people. I don't want to leave here and go to work for someone else and just face the same problems in a different location. Uh, I would really like to make a go of this. Now, fortunately for me, I've got a side business that is doing well, and I can afford to take this risk. Uh, there's, there's a quote by Joe Rogan that I, I really like. Uh, it, it, it goes some, some 
something along the lines of most men live lives of quiet desperation where they, they, they go through the same routine every day hoping for change. And he says that what you really need to do is in the process of grinding it out day after day, you need to set yourself up to create a window. And when the time is right, you jump out of that window and you, you escape this, the grind. And I'm, I'm kind of, I see myself as doing that right now. Um, my side business has been doing well. It's my window. I've just been terrified to open it and jump. So maybe this whole work situation is a blessing in disguise. I don't know. How, how, I don't know how I choose to look at it just yet. But um, in the future, I see myself having more free time to work on Walt in PA. So I decided to take the steps to establish it as a business and to get that whole process set up so that it doesn't sneak up on me sometime next year when, if and when, I would have more time to work on it and then they're becoming tax issues. So because I have a side business, I have an accountant. My accountant's awesome. She did all the paperwork for me. She got it all set up. It was a minimal fee. And uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet, but it's there. And uh, I'm, I'm making changes. In fact, I, I spent all weekend making some adjustments to my YouTube channel. And in fact, I have content scheduled every single day. Well, I shouldn't say every single day. I have videos scheduled Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday from now until December 2nd or December 3rd. Um, with the hopes of creating something and then trying to ride the wave and then pretend, continually produce content going forward. So it's, it's, it's exciting. It's nerve-wracking at the same time, but uh, I, w- I want to see it succeed. And if, and if it's going to succeed, I've got to, I've got to grind it out and, and, and move forward and push forward and see what I can make of it. Because at the end of the day, there's nothing I would like more than to work on my business for a few hours a day and then work on my motorcycle business, my, you know, my moto vlog, my, my podcast, my whatever, my Walt in PA for a couple hours every day and just kind of really enjoy everything that I'm doing and not be under someone's thumb, you know, working for other people. Although working for other people does provide uh, some really nice things like uh, benefits and a consistent paycheck. So there is some, there's fear there. But um, yeah, at some point, the time is going to come when I'm going to have the time to invest more into Walt NPA, and I want to be prepared for it. So I decided to to do what I think is probably overkill now, in a in an attempt to set myself up for success in the future, or at least set try to put myself in a position where I have an opportunity to succeed, and not have to scramble to try to get things in place if and when the time comes. So. It's probably overkill, but what the hell? It's what I do. All right, folks. Usually, I have a featured content section where I talk about other content that I've watched or I'll do a mail call or something like that. I haven't had any new uh, mail call items come in for sticker swaps, so there's nothing there. I've been really tied up with work, so I haven't watched a ton of content on YouTube. However, there there is one piece of content that I did watch, and there's a second part in the series that... I haven't had the chance to watch, but I really want to. I probably will do as soon as I'm finished with this. It is a it is a series, a multi-part series. I'm not, not sure how many parts it's going to be. From friend Trekimoto, who's a friend of the channel, has been a subscriber for a very long time. He's also a member of the Walt NPA Discord. Really nice guy. Absolutely love going on group rides with him. He's a funny guy. He's He's got a just a a fun sense of humor. I really enjoy hanging out with him, riding motorcycles with him because he's the type that just kind of inserts those quick little jabs and jokes. And it's, it's just a lot of fun to ride with both him, goofy bastard, untamed ride. You know, we get together when we can and it's a lot of fun. So anyway, a couple of weeks ago, untamed ride, Trekimoto and I 
decided to take a ride out to Bames Coffee Shop. It's probably, I think I talked about it in the last episode. But anyway, uh, Trekkie Moto did a lot of recording between the time we left until we hit the Pennsylvania Tail of the Dragon. Um, I forget what state park that's in. But uh, he recently released the first video in the series where he rode out to the Riding Pagoda where we all met up. And the second part in the series is when we ride from the Riding Pagoda. And I don't know the end point. I just know that the video is in my watch queue and I've been meaning to watch it for a few days now. And I'm eager to see what happens, partly because I know I'm in it. And mostly because I know what's going to happen. And, and I'm sure that it's going to be full of laughs and good times. So uh, I'm, re- I'm really looking forward to checking that out. If you haven't seen it yet, or if you're not already subscribed to Trekkie Moto's channel, you should absolutely do that and check out the ride. With the, I don't even know what he called it. Anyway, it'll be in the show notes. <laughs> check out Trekkie Moto's channel. The ride from his place to the Pagoda was fun. I'm sure that the parts after that are going to be even better, and I'm personally looking forward to it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this episode of the Motorcycle Adjacent Podcast. I really appreciate the fact that you've stuck with it and watched the entire thing or listened to it on your favorite podcast source, whether it be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Google Podcasts. I like the way I slid that one in there. I didn't even think about it until words were coming out of my mouth. Or if you watch it on YouTube at uh, youtube.com, Walt NPA. There's actually a little C and some slashes in there, but kind of uh, getting away from the point. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, do me a huge favor and hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not already subscribed, and I know that most of you are not that are watching my channel, do me a favor and subscribe. That way you'll see whenever new content is published, much like this. As always, ride safe and I will catch you in the next one.